Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, testing for the live stream. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
is a historic event. Welcome, but also to introduce a few of our guests. But before I get to introducing some of our guests, I think I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't take the time to brag a little bit, I'll be very brief, about the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. Um, as you know, in any college, you look at academics, research, engagement, and, and involvement with the community. The College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources is a founding college that has been very true to that mission of making sure that we are tied to our, to our industry and to our community. Our faculty, staff, and students have been doing great things. In research, we have amazing faculty that are doing innovative research that are solving problems for today and tomorrow. As evidence of that fact, um, just in the past two years, we've had a 28% increase in research funding. On the academic side, we have also had significant growth. Our student numbers are actually just under 3,000 students. That may not sound significant when you just think of 3,000 students within a 40,000, but that is a 64% increase in undergraduate and a 28% increase in graduate numbers in the past 10 years. When I say all of that and talked about the tie to the community and the engagement is it really is we're still tied to who we are. And I think that is something that we hope everyone in this room knows is we are committed to hands-on learning we are poised, we want to have students that we're training that are ready to solve the problems of tomorrow. We believe that learning doesn't just happen in the classroom. Um, we put an emphasis on high impact learning opportunities like our national champion competitive teams. Um, we actually even have a few of those in the room with us today. And I know that Dr. Davis is a betting man, but I will just tell you, I would put my odds on the group that we have in the room with us today. I think they might be upstairs. We have the 2022 Meets Judging Team. And because of the legacy that Dr. Davis started, I put my money on them adding to that national championship name. Other high impact learning opportunities that we really do um, push are internships, study abroad, undergraduate research opportunities. There is this, a culture within the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources that I believe is second to none. And it is, I hope we don't have to say that, but I would say it's a family atmosphere. 
And as we grow, we don't want to lose that. We're going to elevate and we look for excellence, but we want to keep that family atmosphere. And so on behalf of the Kasner family, I would really like to thank the Davis family for investing in us. Um, we take that investment with honor, with pride, and with the seriousness that it deserves. So thank you on behalf of our college and our future students. I now will go on, we do have so many people I could go forever and I hope I don't miss anyone, but I would like to introduce a few dignitaries that we have in the room with us today and special guests. And I, again, I'm sorry if I missed anybody, but if, as I call your name, if you'll either wave or get your guns up so everyone knows that you're in the room. Representing the Board of Regents, we have Mark Griffith and we have Mrs. Alicia Womble. From Texas Tech University, we have President Lawrence Skubinek, Provost and Senior Vice President Ron Hendrick. We have Vice President and Chief of Staff Grace Hernandez. We have Vice President and Chief Financial Officer Noel Sloan. We have Associate Vice President for Operations Sean Childers. And we have Vice President for Research. Joe Heppert. We also have many of my fellow deans from the university in the room. So if you are here, if you will please get, um, wave, your wave your hand or get your guns up. From the Texas Tech University system, we have Deputy Chancellor Kendra Burris, Vice Chancellor Billy Breedlove, Vice Chancellor Christina Butts, Chief Audit Executive Kim Turner, and then we are also very honored to have with us Chancellor Emeritus Robert Duncan. And then I am deeply honored to get to also recognize our honored guests, Joyce and Gordon Davis. Again, thank you all, and I would now, it's my pleasure to invite President Lawrence Skubinek to the podium. Thank you, Dean Akers, for that um, nice insight into the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources and those betting tips. <laughs> uh, to each of you who are here today, thank you so much for being part of this celebration. We're here to recognize and honor Joyce and Gordon, and um, who have so positively influenced Texas Tech University, the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources, but most importantly, the lives of so many students who have been at Texas Tech. This occasion in which we honor Joyce and Gordon provides the opportunity to reflect on many others who've made transformative gifts to this university. This university is the proud, proud home to the Rawls College of Business, the Whitaker College of Engineering, and the Talkington College of Visual and Performing Arts. But the list of supporters is much larger, so later in this program, you will hear through a video from Regent Womble who in thanking the Gordons will more appropriately and thoroughly recognize those who have added to the legacy of this university by making transforma transformational gifts that have changed the trajectory here. It's appropriate for many reasons that we are in this dairy barn today. Gordon Davis grew up on a dairy farm in the state of Washington and I'm proud that I share that background with Gordon and have this Holstein behind me. I never did milk a two-dimensional Holstein, but <laughs> it's still a nice symbol. I share also with Gordon an affinity and a passion for agriculture and an appreciation of its importance to West Texas and this state and this nation. 
Some of you may know Gordon as a businessman. He's the founder of ICEV Multimedia. Gordon and his colleagues at ICEV created a company that has enhanced the educational experience of hundreds of thousands of students across this state and this nation. And in fact, as we were preparing for this event, and I was meeting with Byron and Matt Dewey, Matt Dewey is the Vice President of Marketing and Communication, he mentioned that in his high school in Illinois, the materials they used in their agricultural education program were created by ICEV. Gordon Davis is a person who has set an example of what it means to work hard, persevere, and give back. He displays a dogged determination in his pursuit of excellence. He came to Texas Tech in 1980 as a faculty member, and beyond the usual duties of teaching and research, he assumed leadership of the Meet Judging program. That program was in a very different state than we know it today. But he resolved to make it a model of success for the nation, and he's done that. To better understand Gordon's impact and his history with Texas Tech in that regard, <clears throat> I want to read a short excerpt from the Board of Regents meeting in December 1989. This is from the President's report, then President Bob Lawless, to the Board, and I quote, Last summer, when I visited the meat lab and Dr. Gordon Davis, I challenged him to win a national championship. I learned that we had been competing since 1938 and had finished as high as second, but we had never captured the grand prize. In October, Dr. Davis brought the team to my office so I could present the national championship challenge to each individual on that team. I'm delighted to report that these students responded to the challenge and on November 19th, 1989, they won the first national championship after 51 years of competing. This past November, almost 32 years later, we recognized the 2021 Meet Judging Team, which had won its 16th national championship and the third in a row, the second time they've done that. Just as Gordon was there for those, that first team, and he remains connected to those former students, he's still an important part of the culture, the family of this college and that program. In fact, the day that that national championship team had won in South Dakota, there was a basketball game. And after the game, I walked over to the arena and I was met by Dean Akers and Christina Butts. And we went into the arena and there were I would say maybe one or 200 students, let's say 500. <laughs> <laughs> students, faculty and staff waiting to greet that team driving back from South Dakota. Gordon was there. And when those students see Gordon, they see him as a father figure. There's respect, there's affection. They often call him Gordo, but they do it with the deepest I sense, sense of reverence. Um, and it, it, it shows the impact he's had in one little way, but so significantly. As I mentioned earlier, Gordon has, comes from an ag background. He spent 73 of his 76 years in that industry, related to that industry. He's invested heavily, both with his time and money. In fact, some of you may know that Gordon's name is on the Meat Science Laboratory here on this campus. And Gordon and Joyce have founded or co-founded several endowments that have benefit our faculty and our students. Beyond Texas Tech, Gordon's influence has helped to shape ag programs at many other institutions. I, let me just mention one. At Washington State University, Gordon established an endowment in honor of his great-grandfather, Kashup Davis. Gordon's gifts to these programs are filled with meaning and are driven by a passion for students, for education, and for agriculture. Gordon has taken many risks in his life. And probably many of his business colleagues would know that. But he's also made some very good decisions along the way. 
and one of the best when he decided to marry a Red Raider. <laughs> His wife, Joyce, is a graduate of Texas Tech, and she's here with us today. And we thank you and your family and all of his friends for being here as we honor you. So here we are today to recognize and to show our immense gratitude for Gordon and Joyce, who have made the single largest contribution in Texas Tech's nearly 100-year history. Gordon and Joyce are providing $44 million that will benefit the people and the programs of the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. Thank you, Gordon and Joyce, for your dedication, your commitment. And at this time, could I ask you to come forward and make a few remarks? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> no, I got, a, I got a present for you. When we dedicated the meat lab um, back in 2006, uh, President Whitmore was in your chair. And I, uh, at the end of the remarks, I gave him a, uh, should I use the mic? <laughs> <laughs> at, the, uh, at the conclusion, I gave out a bunch of uh, these. First of all, I'm going to see if you can figure out what that is. Uh, uh, that's, that's a Welcome to agriculture. <laughs> I think that's a pig's tail. Bam! <laughs> so uh, you start out with a 50. <laughs> That's pretty good. I've taught him what a 50 is. But, but anyway, uh, the story on this was uh, in 1990, I probably have a hard time up here on some of these comments, but 1990, I got to teach my last class at Tech. And uh, so anyway, the... Uh, Probably the most gifted class I've ever had. So we got done. We had all these competitions. We had fun every day. And we had a top 10 kids got a pigtail. And we got ready. And the kid with the longest got the longest pigtail was first. And well, the kid that got 10th in the little contest got a little stub. So I'd say you got you got about a fifth place pigtail. <laughs> that looks like a stub to me. And that'll that will fit in real well up in your presence office, all that high-class stuff you got. Okay, uh, like I told you, I'll probably have a hard time once in a while, but I hope, excuse me for that. Uh, I got to know Lawrence uh, on a Monday after we drowned Kansas 16 to 13 uh, in 2020. Uh, and... I liked him the first time. We talked football for 15 minutes. That's the first thing we talked about. And and his poor old phone and his poor old email was loaded up with football stuff and whatever people were talking to him about. And uh, so we started out with that. Then we went to Leach and so forth. And so that's how we got acquainted. Then we found out we both raised on dairy farms. And so uh, then over the, uh, getting to know him a little bit better, I found out that we uh, was up at his office in one of the conversations we've had. That we, we share something in common. We both shoveled S H I T. So that's where you start. If, you, if, if, if you're in the pen shoveling away, you have a pretty good chance to become president of the university someday. <laughs> uh, I, want, I want to talk about my wife. Uh, she, uh, she might have made a mistake. Uh, but my best friend at the time, uh, Gary Mose, he said, uh, he said, Gordon, if you ever find another woman that could even think about dating you, you got to ask her one question. And I said, okay. He said, ask her who the Crimson Tide is. And bam, she goes, Alabama. 
Uh, well, looks like I'm going to get me a date, maybe. And I called her for several times. I finally got a date. And, of course, we talked about football. But I found out that she is absolutely the number one tech football fan. Like, you can't even believe it. You go to a game with her, this third and seven, and the guy's running. He's got about five yards. Get him, get him, get him. You know, I mean, she watches every play. She doesn't want to be up in the box. She wants to watch the game. And I like that. So the red, or if you stick her, it come out red and black. And so uh, we, we share that. She had a green business here. And uh, thank you, Joyce. She's kind of the wind beneath my wings and has been. And the other day, uh, about a week ago, she said, you know, your gas tank's a little bit low. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure enough, we're out of gas. <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing to have a Mercedes and you're out of gas. <laughs> and what you find out is that nobody really cares. And they're not going to help you. <laughs> and of course, what's bad is not the first time I'm out of gas. And so I don't learn very fast. And uh, so anyway, uh, she didn't help me that night. I had to leave it outside, and I didn't like that. She helped me a little bit, though. Um, but... Thank you, Joyce. And when it came time for the naming thing, uh, she's not been in agriculture, although she'd love to go into her grandfather's uh, place and ride horses and all, but she really was an ag person. And so when Byron uh, asked her that question, she respectfully declined. And so uh, even though our name is collectively on the endowment, uh, I think on the naming of the building and that kind of stuff, uh, she chose not to, and uh, she didn't have to do that, but she did. And uh, But you know the song, Wind Beneath My Wings? Well, that's Joyce. Thank you, dear. <laughs> um, next thing I want to talk about is who brung us to the dance. Everybody's heard that before. Well, my family and friends, and I see a bunch of family members over here. My son, my sons Ben and Bryce are both here, and Sharon and Kendall. I see Mary Jane's over there, Ben's mother. Uh, she's been a supporter of, of us for, for a long time, even though we've been uh, apart for a while. And then you go back, I can't see everybody. Then Monty, Monty Chitwood's back there, the Chitwood family. And my nephew, Dave Davis, his wife, Shelly, came in from uh, Fort Worth today. And thank you guys for all showing up. And I think there's some more online that are, that are here. But thanks for the family for being here. And all my friends. All three of them are here. <laughs> <laughs> and they got quite a laugh this morning. I was trying to get ready for this gig. And so they're at the house. And <clears throat> so I tried to get prepared. So for the first time in 100 years, I went ahead and got my... Went to a manicure place. I got this guy, manicured my nails uh, uh, yesterday. It's first, you know, when I was on the farm, I had manure under them and everything else, you know, of course. And so, or golf or dirt and everything. So it, I thought, well, this is a big high class deal. So I better, you know, I better show up and not look too bad. So we got all ready to get in the car this morning, got outside with the sun. I have purple nails. <laughs> I showed them to Steve Akers and Senator Duncan uh, a few minutes ago, and they got a big charge out of it. But like me, I don't really hide anything, so I'm sorry. I thought I was going to have to get up here and have my hands in my pocket, but they don't, don't show very well uh, here, so never mind. That's enough of that. Okay, so who brings us to the dance? Uh, no possible way could we do this if it wasn't for CEB. Uh, CB started in uh, 1984, and I think our sales the first year was $500, and we were so broke we couldn't pay attention, and and we just kept getting better and better and better, and uh, and sure enough we ended up uh, sales getting really high. And now we have 1.3 million students on an international, national, and international basis. Just starting the international thing now. And uh, the, the company that bought us uh, recently, the deal was closed uh, in November, December. Uh, th they wanted to triple us, and, and the deal was going to keep it in Lubbock. And we wouldn't talk to anybody unless they're going to keep it in Lubbock 
And also, uh, we want to keep the same team, the same employees, same executive team, and they had to have integrity. And, uh, and that was a big factor for us. And so far, no surprises. And I think this company's going to stay in Lubbock and grow and grow and grow. So with the CEV people that are here, please stand. These four people over here are members of the executive team, and they got a lot of pressure on uh, Big is a it was a uh, private equity firm, and uh, and they're good good people. But uh, three of them have degrees here at Tech, and they all have different responsibilities. But uh, I'm I'm real proud of them. And and Mike Barley is back here. Mike, would you stand up again, please? He's been with us 32 years. And his degree is in uh, mass communications. And a lot of people have stood up. Uh, right now, the number one degree program uh, in, in the company is uh, ag communications. And we have nine people uh, that have uh, are ag communications, including Dusty, another eight of women. And, and I'll tell you, th these, these, these people do a good job. I love the young people we have at our office. We have a bunch of them. And they just get after it. And, and I, was, I admire that. I admire hard work. And there's several of them there every morning, even as early as 7.30. But thank you all for showing up. Uh, also, Monica, did you stand up? Monica Hightower is back there. She worked for the company as a vice president way back there in the 80s and 90s. Thank you, Monica. And I don't know if anybody else, uh, have I missed anybody, Dusty? CEV? I think everybody. Okay, the next group I want to recognize to help us bring us to the dance were the professional people in Lubbock, Texas. If all those professional people would stand up, please. John, Eddie, go ahead, stand up. Jack, where's Ben Hoffman at? Well, to build this company, thank you. To build this company to where we're at, um, we didn't go outside of Lubbock. We used local uh, attorney firm, uh, which is Crenshaw to Bering Model. I'm not going to mention all the names, but a uh, local accounting firm. We used we used local banks, several, because uh, my uncle Spud told me a long time ago, always have a backup banker. So uh, every once in a while, I just get. So no, I don't want you. I don't want. I don't, they change. They, they change uh, loan officers. They get a guy. I said, no, he's not going to cut it. So I just moved another bank. I always had a second one. My rotation is about seven years, and uh, so several banks. Also, we got turned down by several. Oh no, it's him again. See ya. Because the collateral is uh, is uh, intellectual property, and and that, that's a that's a different kind of collateral. And like I say, uh, first loan was 50000 and we finally got it up a ways, and, and we got some commas in there in order to pull it off, pull off the deal we did. But thank you, all the professional people. And then uh, uh, ag teachers, Texas ag teachers, there's two here, Acres and Green. Okay, they're also known as Green Acres. <laughs> And they were the ag teachers at Monterey. Matter of fact, Ben had them as teachers. But the Texas ag teachers across the state, about 2,500 in that group, uh, nearly all of them use our product. And they were the first ones that really thought CEB was okay. And matter of fact, Roger, at, when he was at Fredericksburg, that was our first customer, Fredericksburg, uh, Texas. And a few years ago, we celebrated a 100 millionth viewer of a CEB production and that was Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, I, I forget what class it was, a business class or something. But anyway, we've moved from agriculture to several other subjects now. But, but thank you, Roger and Steve and the Texas Ag Teachers. Um, <laughs> trying to think who else brought. Oh, yes, there's a senator. Is Carl Isaac here? Okay, well, 
the best thing that ever happened to us to help us get to this day, it's all about the journey, was April 17th, 2001. I was, uh, I was in a, uh, a board meeting uh, for the Texas FFA Foundation we're trying to raise money. What a surprise. And I said, these textbook companies got a lot of money. We can talk to them. And Guy Finstead raised his hand and said, hey, Gordon, did you know we're having a textbook adoptions coming up uh, for ag? He says, I think they got $800 million, uh, in the budget uh, for, for Texas for textbooks, K-12. through I says, what? So I've been in business 17 years, didn't even know where all the money was. And turns out some wise people, if you can imagine that at the political area, uh, uh, I mean, it'd be hard to find one now, but, but, but back, back in the 1800s, they said, you know, I think it'd be a good idea to put a few, few dollars in a textbook fund. And so the kids in Texas can always have textbooks. Well, that fund now is called the Puff Fund. It's got $40 billion in it. And that's for textbooks for K through 12. And so, of course, I sit in there. We have no courses. This is for a book, you know. And, of course, they call it textbooks. And we have no books. And we have no courses. Other than that, we're really all lined up for this deal. <laughs> so we go begging over to, to uh, uh, Senator Duncan and Carl Isett, our representative, and try to figure out some strategy to, to maybe uh, get some funding. Of course, there was a recession came in there. I moved out of our house to a rent house. And it was real good. No, and so we're trying to make this thing happen, and it kept telling the bankers, "Yeah, we're going to get this done." Blah blah blah. At least they didn't call a note. But thank you, Senator Duncan. Thank you, Carl Isaac, and Bob Craig was on the State Board of Education at that time. And he helped us too, and we finally pulled it off um, and got out of debt on October twentieth. And we called that was our first thud, and and the biggest thud ever was uh, December twenty seventh, just uh, a few days ago. And so but you got to have that first thud or you're not going to have any more thuds. You're going to be done. The thud's going to be the door slamming and walking out in the parking lot. Um, okay, that's enough on who brung us, but uh, thank you for all of you. If I've missed anybody, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So agriculture, the president mentioned this, 73 years. I started out on a uh, wheat farm and uh, it's three years old. And there were three years, and I got to ride the tractor. It's about all I could do. And I think maybe I fed a calf or two. But sitting around watching um, uh, watching video games, and we didn't have a TV, of course. Um, that, was, that was not going to work with my dad. And then we got on the dairy farm, and I learned, I learned at least one thing on the dairy farm. One of the things I learned is don't pee on a hot wire fence. You only do that one time. And, uh, of course, I had some experience. Of course, I learned how to drive a tractor and haul concrete and haul manure and, and uh, clean, clear, clear, uh, uh, clear acreage and all that kind of stuff. But it was agriculture. Then I got to go to Washington State University for five years, study agriculture. And I, I was looking for my favorite field. And so I was an ag science major, so plant pathology, um, physiology, and milk secretion. I tried that. Uh, that looks real good, just milking a cow. Step in there and have physiology milk secretion. Take that course. It's all you can eat. And so I said, no, I'm not going to be in the dairy bill. I'm forgetting that deal. And, and so I went to soils, and, and I took some ag mechanics, and I took, uh, took some social stuff. I needed that. I needed a whole load of that. I need, probably need to take fingernail science 101. But anyway, we... Uh, I got through the university, and, and uh, finally, the fifth year, I found, I got on the meat judging team, and that was awesome, and so I finally found my passion, and then I got to teach three years of ag, and, and I got to work with kids, that was some of the best teaching I ever did, yeah, I got to work with FFA kids, and, and the excitement of a bunch of 14, 15-year-old kids in a van, and you're on the way to a potato judging contest, or a deer judging contest, or an apple judging contest. We did it all. We did every kind of contest you can imagine. It's great, especially when some of them do real well that aren't really gifted. They're not as gifted as all the people in this room. That is such great teaching. And so, and it was fun to be with all those kids. And then, then I got to go to A&M. A&M was 100% different, 180 degrees different from Washington State. 
And, but I got to work under the preeminent meat scientist in the world, uh, Dr. Gary C. Smith. And he's turned out to be a mentor for mine uh, ever since uh, 1969. And I, got a, uh, I went to graduate school and got two degrees there in meat science and muscle biology and got a chance to, he gave me a chance to coach a meat judging team. It turned out to be a pretty good team. And so then in that 13 years in academia, including here, all of that's agriculture, all of it's different areas. And then CEV, the way we did CEV is all agriculture to start with, and now we're in other subjects. So 73 years in agriculture, and I've loved it. So when it came time to make a decision on giving back, I thought, that, uh, yeah, it could have been specifically to meat science. It could have been specifically to some other institution uh, or even to FFA. But I thought uh, we've lived here for 41 years. I thought it, it needed to go to Texas Tech. And we're only get, we're going to do one big gift, and this was it. Because I guarantee you, you're not going to get another gift like this. <laughs> And Dr. Pond told me, I think our first gift was like $1,000. Now we keep moving that decimal point over, and he kept talking about that. And it's going, uh, 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 and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not broke, so that's good. Um, agriculture is a sleeping giant. Um, if you eat and wear clothes, you're involved in agriculture. Period. And how big is agriculture? Well, in globally, it's 11th as an industry. Across West Texas, we couldn't find a number for West Texas, but I think it's second to oil and gas. And But for the state of Texas, Mindy helped me with this, uh, if uh, for the state of Texas, if you include food manufacturing, uh, along with agriculture and natural resources, it's number one in Texas, and food manufacturing is number one, the number one industry in the United States. So for agriculture, uh, at Texas Tech, to go from here to here, and Cindy always says, they've been going from here to here to here. All we're going to do is just take another notch. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to keep it going. Uh, this, you know, we've come a long ways. And and I'm 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 happy about the world we've come, and so uh, th that's my thinking. That I think agriculture is sleeping giant, and I think our best days are in front of us. Uh, I'm going to go backwards. One I forgot. I don't have a lot of notes. Um, who brought us to the dance? Well, meat judging. Are the meat judging any meat judging kids here? If they are, would you stand up? Are they upstairs? Well, I, I went over yesterday and looked at the livestock arena. It's probably my favorite uh, room in the world. I hope someday, uh, Lawrence, that you can replace that thing. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, there's junior colleges that have got a better uh, livestock arena than that. But there's only one thing they don't have. They don't have 57 national championship banners hanging. We do. And um, the first one is 1934, and I got thinking, hmm, I bet that team practiced in this building, probably in this room. <laughs> Wouldn't you think? Well, all they're out here is a bunch of fields and stuff. And there's cows and sheep and pigs and stuff around here, so I suppose they're in here practicing. And then we won four national championships between 1934 and 1953. And then we won nine more from 1980 to 1990, 1980 to 1999. We know nine more then. Okay, so think about that. Four for a period of about, what, 53, you're the math guy, 53 all the way to, to 80. What would that be? See, that's 47 years. Is that right? No, 37. Is that right, Lawrence? How many? 27 years, we won four. Okay, then we go 20 years, we win nine. Everybody getting the math now? Four and then nine. Well, from, remember, I'm not even in the building. I'm up at CEB and we're grinding. 
And so this is with the faculty we have now, the students we have now, and the program we have now, the administrators we have now. Between 19, see, I'm going to get this, yeah, 1990 and 2021, we won 44 national championships. And that's across nine different subjects, nine different types of contests. And probably about half men and half women competing. These Texas Tech kids just love to compete, and they love to win. They just flat love to compete. I don't care if it's water polo. I don't care if it's judging livestock, judging meat, judging wool, uh, some kind of quiz bowl thing where you got to be pretty smart and answer questions. They just get in that band, and the deal is when you get in that band, you're going to win. And what we have established a culture here that's okay to win. It's just okay to win. And the students that leave here go to another university and they try to put that same thought process across their students. And I think it's good for students to graduate from a university with an idea of what it took to win. Because you don't win every time. But it's nice to say we did our best. And so I, I'm proud of the all the judging teams. And Dr. Is Dr. Miller here? Dr. Miller, with you and Dr. Rathman stand, are there any other are there any other coaches here? Uh, these two guys, between the two of them, Dr. Rathman's won six national championships in life judging. It started livestock judging. And these two guys at Texas Tech University, and I follow all this. I have all the records in my office. Livestock judging started in 1900, and Ryan Rathman at our university has won three at AM and six years, won nine. And the second place coach of all time has won five. He is the greatest livestock coach of all time, right there. And this guy right here has won 15 national championship in meat judging, and it's not even close. Whoever's second's probably got about five. And so they work. They do a fabulous job recruiting. They recruit on a national basis, and they bring these kids in, and I've gotten a chance to meet them. I get to talk to them each year, and it's a, quite a thrill for me to be around those kids. And they bring in players. And on the worst day, these two teams finish fifth, on the worst day. And we win a lot. Uh, one group I forgot to mention when I said who brings us to the dance are collaborators. With all those collaborators, Mike Simpson, uh, any collaborators of every, Dr. Pond, if you'd stand, please. Uh, Mike Simpson, stand. Uh, who, who else is in the room that's a collaborator? Uh, Dale Warner, uh, Mark. Okay, Mindy, uh, Ryan, is John here? I didn't see him. John, you slipped in the back door. Okay, John back there used to work in, uh, he's the longest running collaborator we have. He's at West Texas A&M now. Uh, he worked us on horse judging in uh, 1987, and Clayton uh, asked him to help us again. So he's been on video with us since 1987. He's known all over the world. John Pipkin at West Texas A&M University. Been a collaborator for, uh, uh, again, that's another math problem, 13. <laughs> 35 years, so that's 35 years. That's pretty awesome. Dr. Pond was in, uh, was in uh, animal nutrition with his field, and he, was a, he had uh, black hair then, now he's got gray hair. So he's, he, they don't hardly recognize him now, but still we haven't replaced that video. Dale Warner is like a machine on camera. He's helped us in meat science several times. Dr. Bashirs has helped us several times with food safety. I mean, and Dr. Rathman, of course, in livestock judging. I mean, this is the best of the best. And we've used over 1,900 collaborators on camera over the years, but the, but the ones that we've used the most are at Texas Tech University. And we, we, call, we call our collaborators, and Mike Simpson, Alanco, uh, where, where are you at, Mike? Uh, Alanco has been awesome to us, and thank you. They're, they're one of our, uh, we have certifications, and they were able, they're our certification partner. 
and thank you for Lanco. And there's m many more uh, collaborators that have helped us over the years. Thank you. They helped br bring us to the dance too. And by the way, these guys were not overpaid. Um, when you're broke, you say, hey, you suppose you could work for us for about 10 days for nothing? And, you know, we'll, we'll make sure we get you a hamburger for lunch. I think that's what the deal was with uh, John Pipkin. And I don't think it's changed much for anybody else. Now I guess we're stuck having to pay. Okay. Well, that's enough on that. So I had to write a, a vision on the, on the Memorandum of Understanding. I started working on it in, uh, back in May. And just start out with a blank piece of paper. How do you write a vision for uh, a College of Ag Sciences and Natural Resources? So I, I, I've worked on 15 long-range plans in my career. The longest one is 13 years. And right now we're in year five at CEV on the latest one. And uh, this one's 20 years. It goes to 2040. So how do I see it? Well, uh, let's start out with research. And right now we're ranked 38th. Uh, Texas Tech is out of 293 schools that teach agriculture. We are 38th. We bring in about $32 million and, and, and Cindy brought up how much we've improved. Well, in the plan, I say, now of course, whenever the new dean gets here, they'll come up with a new plan, which is great, but you gotta have a first draft. Uh, I put a goal in at, uh, for us to get to number 25 by, uh, by 2025, and then it get to number 10, which is New University of Nebraska by 2030, and then challenge for the top spot in 2040, which right now is Florida, and second place is uh, Texas A&M. And now we're gonna have to improve our facilities, we're gonna bring in a lot of talent, a lot of professors and all, but it's a long range plan, that's what they're for. And so, um, I think that's a worthy goal for research. So repeat after me. It's okay to win. You're ready? It's okay to win. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, let's go to teaching. Well, there's no excuse. Superior teaching. You gotta, there's, I looked at, really carefully over the whole list. I looked at the top ones. Some of them just become a uh, university of a bunch of scientists. And uh, they have graduate students, I guess, teaching the classes. And I'm not impressed when a guy is a great, great scientist or a woman and doesn't care about teaching. That doesn't impress. I guess we got to have some of those. But I like to see uh, some super teachers involved, too, the ones that will take a van full of kids and go somewhere. Now, there are some people like Dr. Rathman and Dr. Miller that can do it all. But it's pretty tough to do it all. And so we need great teaching and student success is huge. I saw that. That's important for Lawrence too. When they graduate, help them get lined up and get the job. And these kids on these national championship teams, they get two or three offers or whatever. They get plenty of opportunities because who doesn't want a winner? So for teaching, and we're going to try to improve it. Repeat after me. It's okay to win. And, and I also think it's important for all of our other teams to use the meat team, the livestock team, as a as a model, and I like to see all of our teams get way up to the top. And every time that van leaves, I don't care if it's a plant contest, a soils contest, whatever. The objective is to win. Um, the next one I want to talk a little bit about is service, and it, there's no rankings on that, but I think Texas Tech is already in the top ten in service, and I think we should do a great job. Agriculture does a super job. At West Texas A&M University, at Texas A&M, at Colorado State, at Kansas State, at Tarleton, uh, these schools do a great job of service. They help out the FFA. They help out their their stakeholders. Agriculture is absolutely awesome, and so I'd be surprised if there's another college at Texas Tech that does a better job in service than, than uh, the College of Ag Sciences and Natural Resources, in my opinion. And I think we need to expand that and, and get it better and better. And the last one is development. And this is going to be audience participation. You won't believe it's in my plan. Right now, right now we have $80 million as of December in, in the, the Texas Tech University Foundation 
that came from the College of Ag Sciences and Natural Resources. Well, after doing a little think course a little higher today, but the idea is by 2040, in my opinion, with some hustle, it's going to take some work. I think it could go to 950 million. And right now we're sitting where we're sitting. I think we're already in the top 25. And we have a beautiful country out here in West Texas. People, ag people in West, they, they, they love this college. And you know, donors will support winners. You win. That's where nobody wants to put money in a black hole. Nobody wants to support a loser. And so uh, all I have to do is meet some of these kids. And I learned from Dean Bennett over at Goddard Building. Uh, he's deceased now. And he's, he was my mentor for, uh, for philanthropy. And I remember when I gave a gift several years ago, and they, they sent me a list of whoever the donor. He sent me a gift for $25 and put it on there. I look, Dean Bennett. Wow. And I know Dean Bennett had um, virtually hundreds of different endowments that he started, and, and uh, Jane Piercy and, and Matt Williams and Alex Jack over here in College of Ag Development over the years. They've added more and more and more. Well, Dean Bennett would put $25. I found out that he puts 20, gives everybody $25. So even if you've only got $25, that's at least a start. And I think... Uh, and, and of course, along the way, of course, you got to move the decimal as you get a little older. But you can forget about taking it all the way out there. And so, uh, the last thing I'm going to say is uh, four cornerstones of my career. Um, uh, number one has always been the pursuit of excellence. It's all over the memorandum of understanding to the point they're probably tired of re reading it. And and the top, the top of pursuit of excellence to me is world class. I think it applies. We want to have a world class College of Ag Sciences and Natural Resources at Texas Tech University. Period. World class, whatever that is. And so, it's all about pursuit of excellence. It's not going to happen overnight. And and so, just a gradual process. And of course, that's what we've done. At CEV, same thing was done with the meat judging team. You start on the bottom and you keep working up. But the College of Ag Science and Natural Resources is not starting the bottom. We're starting quite a ways up there. Okay, the next thing, uh, another cornerstone for me is success begets success. And I've seen that repeat itself over and over and over and over and over. And I think that's what we need to keep doing. You, you go through your year, you finish your year, you're done. Okay, what can we do to make it better next year? Now, the third one, it's all about the kids. I like to have two kids come up here right now. Would these are the Rasman girls? I've known them since they're babies. This is Carly. Carly's in the fourth grade. Kinley's in the seventh grade. What I'm saying is all about the kids. Uh, I was asked a long time ago in the 1980s, Dr. Davis, what was your what did you want to achieve at Texas Tech with the meat judging team? I said, uh, I wanted us to have some respect. And I said, uh, when a van is driving to a major contest, and the question is, and one of the kids will ask the coach, who do we have to beat? I wanted to make sure that Texas Tech was in that sentence. And then for, for going to college, and you have little fourth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders, ninth grade kids, sitting at the dinner table or around talking to their teachers or their advisor, say, where do you, where do you, I want to say to our culture, where do you think we ought to go? I want them, I want the answer to come in all 50 states. I'd like to like have Texas Tech in the sentence. They just, you know, there's a lot of good, they could say there's a lot of good colleges. You could go to Cornell, you could go to Kansas State, but you know, you ought to think about Texas Tech too. And maybe in the state of Texas, we're already there, but we need to get that thing broader and broader and broader. I don't care how smart they are. They got scholarships and bring them on. Where are you going to college? Texas Tech. Oh! <laughs> Texas Tech, two for two. We got two. That's good. Thank you, honey. See you. How about you? 
Then the fourth thing, it's important to give back. That's my fourth cornerstone. And uh, yeah, I, I just think that's important. I, it's kind of it's kind of a something I picked up is it's not what you have, it's what you gave. And this is a big day for Joyce and I today, and uh, we're real proud to do it. I've, we've given before, but I've never given five dollars where I want it back, except for a bet. If I bet my cushion over here at Five Dollars Golf Course, I can't wait to play them again, get my five dollars back. But but anyway, for gifting, I think it's important to give back, and everybody has to figure out their own ways. Talent, uh, 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 talent, uh, yeah, uh, time, talent, treasure. And when you get older, they want treasure. That's how that deal works. They don't care about the time. Is that right, Lawrence? <laughs> Byron, Crick? Yeah, let's get down to the treasure. Okay. Okay, that's enough. Uh, the last thing I'm going to say is I came across a, uh, uh, a real neat, what I thought was, was a nice philosophy. It was, a, it was a, something that Dr. Pond sent me. He has what's called Pond's uh, Ponders. And it's an old Chinese proverb. And it goes like this. If you want, it's about happiness. If you want to be happy for one hour, take a nap. If you want to be happy for one day, go fishing. If you want to be happy for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want to be happy for a lifetime, help someone else. That's all. So because of the historic nature of this gift, today uh, we are announcing that the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources will now become the Gordon W. Davis College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources, and we will call it the Davis College. <laughs> We, we want to share a message from Regent Dusty Womble, and then after that, we have one more little presentation. But now we'll hear from Regent Dusty Womble. It's a great day for Texas Tech, and I'm sorry that I can't be there with Gordon and Joyce Davis on a monumental day when they make a transformational gift to the Davis College of Agriculture in the lines of other Texas Tech greats like Ed Whitaker, Jerry Rawls, Jim Sal, Mark Lanier, Terry Fuller, Bob Hurd, Jerry Hodge, Helen Jones, the Talkington Foundation, the CH Foundation, Bear Crop Science, the Gates Foundation, and ASCO that have all made monumental gifts to the, ag to the academic side of Texas Tech University. This is a gift that stands above all others. I want to personally thank Gordon and Joyce for their generosity, for their love of the university, and for their willingness to give forward so that others may follow in their footsteps. Again, what a great day. I wish I was there and take it from someone that loves this university. I am profoundly grateful for your gift and generosity. Thanks again. There are so many people who I should thank to help put the stay together. I'm going to begin with Byron Kennedy. Um, you're just lovable, Byron. 
And I think the, the Davis family feels that way. Um, Matt Dewey and his team has been very helpful in the publication, the publicizing of this event, but so, so many others, so many in the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources have worked throughout the past few days. Christina Butts has a special relationship with Gordon, and uh, she has a, a gift for you right now, if you'd come forward, Gordon. So we all know how much it means to you to uh, have our congressman here today, Jody Arrington, our good friend. Unfortunately, because of votes, he wasn't able to be here, but he may have been told how much you appreciate the United States flag. And he had two flags flown over the Capitol for you to celebrate your and Joyce's contribution and support of Texas Tech. So one is going to be for you and Joyce, and the other one is for the College of Agriculture for President Skubanek and Dr. Akers to hang in the Davis. So I have those flags for you from Congressman Arrington. And before Byron comes up here with closing remarks, uh, Gordon and Joyce, let me again say uh, how deeply and profoundly grateful we are, we are to you for what you've given us. Uh, this is an incredible support, but you've also given us a challenge. And I know you will remind me of that challenge many times. <laughs> Well, thanks again. I think it's been a wonderful program, obviously, to Gordon and Joyce. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you who are here uh, in attendance. We were going to see if we could set the record for uh, how big we could make an event in the dairy barn, and we might have done so today. So a, a couple of quick things. Uh, for media availability is going to be back here at room uh, 111 um, after we conclude. Um, also, you'll note as you leave on the Goddard building, uh, there is a temporary signage of what the new name of the college is going to be uh, for you to see that as you exit. We've got two final things that I think are indicative of the day. One, as you leave, you'll hear the victory bells ringing in the administration building. Uh, and two, um, uh, at the request of Gordon and Joyce, we've got a special guest, head coach, uh, head football coach, Joey McGuire, uh, to do the thing that he does the best. I gotta say this real quick, and I promise I'll be quick. Uh, whenever I got introduced in the at the board, um, met these two wonderful people, incredible people. But the people that I met, like you said, were the students, 16-time national champions, and you know, for me, somebody that loves to win, and I accept that challenge. Um, I just wanted some of that greatness to rub off, and so I was saying thank you so much for them. Uh, but then I got to have lunch with you guys laugh the entire time. If y'all know Gordon, you're going to laugh the entire time. But his beautiful wife, the passion that she has for this university, the passion she has for this football team, showed through the entire time that we were eating lunch. And I, I really, I, I think we're going to be neighbors. I think we're pretty close over there, so I can't wait to spend some time with you. But I came here for one reason. Um, well, really two. I accept your challenge. We're going to win. And number two, give me a little Raider power for this uh, – Huge day. Thank you so much. Thank y'all both so much. So let's do it right. You better get loud back there. Freedom! Freedom! Freedom!